Hi, first grade, it's Ms. Owens, and I am going to go over day 24 with you. Remember that our office hours are from 9.15 to 10.15 and 1.15 to 2.15 every day. If you need support or need any help, please jump onto our office hours or stay in your Zoom meeting and we will be happy to help you. All of the links for the lessons will be in the description below in this YouTube video and in your Daily Dojo message. So for day 24 in math, you're going to get your clock and clock hands from day 22. Use your clock to show 2.30, 4.30, 12.30, 9.30, and 6.30. Draw a picture of each time and write the times beside the pictures in your math journal or on paper. In your math journal or on a piece of paper, describe how an analog clock and a digital clock are the same and different. Make a list of where you have seen digital clocks being used. Make a list of where you have seen analog clocks being used. We've already made you a tree map of the different types of clocks that you may have seen before. So we have analog and digital. In your classroom, you, classroom, you may have seen a classroom clock. It looks like this with the hands and the numbers. Or you may have seen a cuckoo clock before where it has the little bird that jumps out on every hour. There's also digital clocks, where it just has the number written. And that can be an alarm clock, a cell phone clock, or a microwave clock. I want you to continue my list of other places that you've seen these types of clocks, as well as talk about what is the same and what is different about these types of clocks and write it in your math journal. Now I'm going to show you how to draw on an analog clock. Yesterday, you should have done a drawing on an analog clock of time to the hour. Today, we're gonna to focus on time to the half hour. And what I mean by that is that yesterday, you might have done three o'clock, but today we're going to do 3.30. So let's, rem let's remember that our red smaller hand is the hour clock, and it shows us what hour it is. The blue longer arm, or hand shows us how many minutes have passed. So if we look at this clock, it's a little bit different from yesterday because the hour, you're used to seeing the hour exactly on the hour. But because 30 minutes have passed, it's going to be right in between the two numbers. So it's between the three and the four. So it's not quite four o'clock because it is 3.30. Okay, and the blue hand is pointing at the six all the way at the bottom. Each one of these numbers counts for five minutes. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Or you can count the individual small lines. But, so this, our hour hand is between the three and the four. So it's 330. It will only be four once it has gotten to four or passes four just a little bit. That's what's tricky about it. Now let's look over here. It says 530, so we need to draw 530. So remember, if we're doing 30, the minute hand is going to be on the six. It's going to be half an hour. We can also double check by counting. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right, we checked it. That looks correct. Now let's check the hour. If it was exactly on five, it would look over here. But because 30 minutes have passed, it's going to be right in the middle between the five and the six. The next two are a little bit tricky and they look a little bit different. So our first one is 1230. Let's double check our minutes, okay? So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So our minute hand is correct because it should be 1230. Now, if it was going to be 12 exactly, it would be facing straight up, but because it's 30 minutes past, it's right in the middle between the 12 and the one. We're gonna look at 6.30 now. Our minute hand should be on the 30, should be right in the middle. So let's double check this again. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, okay? Now we're looking for the hour for six. Because it's 30 minutes past, it's gonna be halfway in the middle between six and seven. So it says 6.30. Okay, 
Now you need to complete the rest of the times listed on your packet in your math notebook. Remember to draw your clock as well as label what time it is. If you have a crayon or a marker and you can draw your hour and your minutes, red and blue, that would be great. All right, so again, so get your clock and clock hands from day 22. Use your clock to show 2.30, 4.30, 12.30, 9.30, and 6.30. Draw a picture of each time and write the times beside the pictures in your math journal or on paper. I already went ahead in this video and I showed you 12.30 and 6.30, so you only have a few more left to do. If you need any help, make sure to join us during our office hours and we are happy to help you. Your optional work is to log into Dreambox and continue working for 15 minutes. And you can watch the telling time to the hour and half hour video in the link below. Remember, if you need help, join us in our office hours. For reading, you can watch the reading lesson video for day 24. You can either listen to the article or you can read it yourself. The article is called, What's Best? The Debate About Pale Male's Nest. It is on page 13 of your packet. After you have listened to it or you have read the article, think and talk about the two different opinions about pale male's nest. Then you're going to write notes about the reasons for each opinion. This, is, this worksheet is on page 14. Remember an opinion is something that you think. My opinion about colors is pink is my favorite color, but my opinion may be different from someone else's opinion. So let's think and talk about the two different opinions about pale male's nest. So here is your article. Remember the link is below in my YouTube video or in your Daily Dojo message, or you can pause my screen. I've included a little clip of our article as well as our worksheet and we can work through an example together. So I'll read the article for us and then we'll, I'll do an example of each one for you. So bird watchers want what's best for the birds. Leave that nest up, the bird watchers are saying. They think the nest should stay where it is. Birds need nests to protect and raise their babies. Tall buildings are good places for birds to nest because they are similar to trees, a hawk's natural nesting place. Also, the hawks can easily find food in the big city. They love to dine on rats, mice, and pigeons. The bird watchers also think that leaving the nest up is great for people who enjoy watching wild birds. There are many reasons why these people want the nest to be left up on the building. These hawk lovers will be so sad if the nest is taken down. So I'm gonna pause there and I'm gonna start on our first example. So you're gonna list reasons to either leave the nest up or take the nest down. So I'm gonna look for the one, I've already read the, Part of our article about leaving the bird's nest up. So I'm going to look for opinions in here. And you can easily find opinions by statements that start with I think or they believe. So I'm going to look for some of those. One of the ones that I found is the hawks can easily find food in the big city. So I am going to underline that so I remember where I found my information. That is one of the reasons for leaving the nest up. I'm now going to type it in my box below. Hawks can easily find food in the big city. That is one of the reasons why they believe you should leave the nest up. Now I'm going to read the next part of my article to find out an opinion on why they should take the nest down. That nest is a mess. Many of those who live in the apartment building want the nest to be taken down. Take that nest down, they are saying. Bones, feathers, and bird poop fall onto their balconies and the sidewalk below the nest. What a mess, they complain. There are other reasons why some people want the nest to be taken down too. The bird watchers who gather to watch the hawks are making the area too crowded. Also, parts of the nest fall onto the sidewalk below which is dangerous for the pedestrians who walk there. In New York City, it is legal to remove a bird nest as long as there are no babies or eggs in it. There are no eggs or baby birds yet, and they think the pale male and Lola can find a better place to live. For all these reasons, many people think the nest should be taken down. 
So now I need to find an opinion for why it is a good idea to remove the nest. I'm going to look through my article to find a good example. And I'm also going to underline my example so I remember where I found it, okay? We can say parts of the nest fall onto the sidewalk below, which is dangerous for the pedestrians who walk there. Now I'm going to type it into my box below and you will be able to write it. So parts of the nest fall onto the sidewalk and it is dangerous. Remember when I fill these in, make sure I I'm making sure I spell the words correctly as they are right here in my text. So when you complete this, you have to list all four reasons why you should leave the nest up or all and all four reasons why they should remove the nest and take them down. I've already given you an example of each one. Remember to go back and underline them in a pencil, crayon, or marker if you have one to remember where you got that information. It's really important to underline where you got your information because in our Directions above, it says use evidence from the text to support your thinking. And your teacher is gonna know that if you underlined it, that's where you got your information. That's your evidence that you have found. All right, so for word work, you're going to watch the word work instructional video for day 24. You're going to sort it out. Fold a piece of paper into thirds or create a tree map. Write E-R, I-R, and U-R at the top of each section. Sort your cycle 20 words by writing them under the correct spelling pattern. Read each list of words out loud. See the word list below on page 18. I made a mistake. It should say day 24, and I apologize about that. But here are your cycle 20 words. So you can pause on the screen so you can copy them down. An example of how you can do your work in your notebook, Bossy R. So I have created a tree map and I have labeled each one as ER, IR, and UR. You will put your ER words in here, IR words in here, and UR words here. These are not your words, this is just an example. So please do not copy down these words. Optional. So you can try to find other words that have the E-R sound spelled with E-R, I-R, or U-R. You can look in a book or look around your home. Add them to your tree map and submit to your teacher. Your science topic is energy transfer. So plants and animals get their energy from different places. Plants use heat energy from the sun to make food. Plants are called producer, producers because they make their own food. Animals cannot make their own energy. They get their energy from eating plants or other animals. Let's think about a squirrel. A squirrel eats acorns from oak trees. Oak trees get their energy from the sun and make acorns. The squirrel eats the acorns. Does something eat the squirrel? Sometimes a hawk will catch and eat a squirrel. The energy goes from the sun to the oak tree, tree acorns, to the squirrel, to the hawk. That is called a food chain and shows the flow of energy from one organism to another. I want you to explain to an adult what the main difference is between plants and animals. Write it in your journal, your notebook that you got from school, what the main difference, what's different about plants and animals and how they get their energy. These are your specials for the week and have a great day. Make sure to jump in for our office hours if you need any support.